So the two biggest questions here, why do we need a shot sequence and what's it for? So when we look at our shot sequence, we've got some uh, key principles that we need to build into everything that we do. It's all gonna start with our stance. All right, so I got my stabilizer set on the ground here to simulate a shooting line. I'm gonna talk about how we approach that and what we need to do with it. All right, so once we have our feet set, the next thing we wanna do, look at our bow hand. That's gonna be a very, very important point because your bow hand is what touches the bow and what's the last point of contact on that bow every single shot. All right, so I've got my hand here with the bow. So what you're gonna look for when you go set your hand in there. All right, so the next thing you wanna do, concentrate on the bow shoulder. The way you set your bow shoulder each shot can make a very big difference on your physical draw length that you use for your body. It also makes a really big difference on the steadiness that you have on target as well. So I use a very simple trick and a very easy method to go by so that I make sure that I have repeatability on it each shot. All right, so now we're gonna talk about aiming. So this is the part where everything starts to come alive. Uh, whenever I work with an archer, the main thing that I always see when it comes down to aiming is that they think they have to force the pin or force their dot to stay in the middle of the target and that's what they work their whole shot around is they're forcing themselves to stay in there and they're trying to control everything and that does a lot of things. What we want to do with our aiming is actually work it into what we call a subconscious aiming. So basically, whenever you build the muscle memory, whenever you build uh, the repetitions through blank bailing, your body, your muscle memory, and your brain knows what's going to happen. It, but basically, your eye is going to perceive what you're aiming at downrange. See how your brain's going to react to that. So you can draw back to full draw and you can start your shot process and you can seven. And then it goes. I'm not forcing my release to go off. I'm not doing anything with it. But it, all right, so what does shot execution mean? So it's a little bit different than putting the bow on target, squeezing a shot off. You want to kind of get away from that mindset. Uh, you want to look at it as what it is. You want to have smooth, clean and fluid motions. In that, we need to break that down into two segments. You're gonna have your front half, your bow half. All right guys, so here's where the magic happens. I've got my bow set up here. I've got everything on target. What I'm gonna do is draw back. I'm gonna hold on target and talk through everything. But I'm gonna give you an idea of what I'm gonna do first. It starts to slow that pin movement down and it almost stops at one point. And then you'll start to see it get a little bit twitchier a little bit faster and start to break and move around. And that's because I've gone too far to that point of no return. And you have your back half. This is gonna be your release half. This is gonna be what you have commonly heard referred to as back tension. But I'm gonna show you exactly what that means. I'm gonna show you how to create it and I'm gonna show you why you need to be able to use it. All right, so why back tension? Well, for the first and the biggest part of it, you're using a larger segment of muscles by using your back muscles. Now how to get it there. That's the biggest thing that I hear people, oh, I, I'm pulling with my back, I'm pulling with my back, but their, their shoulders are really high, their, their arm is really bunched up. They're using their shoulder, they're using their arm. They're not using their back. And that's because they haven't set their body up properly. So what you wanna do, and then when you're doing that, that's gonna allow you to hold steadier on target because you're using that larger muscle group. And it's also gonna allow you to be able to have an easier, softer shot with your hand and have more repeatability. So All right, so let's take a minute and let's talk about what blind bailing is. Bring all that together. It's gonna to be making it one solid fluid motion. Second part of this is the timing. Your shot timing is gonna be the single biggest factor in when you want your shot to break. One, two, three. The timing that you saw on target when you were doing your float pattern routine, building muscle motion and that auto response in our head to be able to fire that shot at the correct time. So a trick that I've used, one 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000, four 1,000, five 1,000, six. So we need to mentally work through all that. So that's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be doing that every single time. You're gonna see your groups improve that way and you'll see your shot improve that way. So let's talk about the second part of blind bailing. So the blind bailing, like I said, is to build that muscle memory. We want to make sure we're doing the shot correctly every single time. I talked and hit on this a little bit earlier about what that needs to look like and the extension on here. That's what you're looking for on feel. Go and go into the last part of this video. That's the mental aspect of our shot. All right, so the last thing we want to talk about is the mental side of everything. More specifically, mental imaging. Your mind is probably the most powerful tool that you have at any of your expense mental imaging that we talked about. 
when you've practiced over and over and over and built that into your brain, built that into your mental routine, your body's gonna take over for you. That's what's gonna help you be able to perform at the highest level and what's gonna help you be able to meet your goals. Focusing on positive, focusing on the work that you put in, and focusing on your form instead of, because that's what's gonna make you score the best on target.